All right, I think we are. We are live. What's up, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Orioles Weekly. And uh, this week, we got a lot of news to go over. Um, lots of big, big news to go over, to be honest with you. And uh, we're going to get started here in just a minute. Welcome in, everybody. Opening day is tomorrow. First thing, I am so excited. I don't know about everybody else, but I'm ecstatic. I can't wait. Um, Orioles are supposed to play at 3 o'clock tomorrow. Now, there's supposed rain in the forecast in Maryland, uh, in Baltimore, but hopefully we won't get that rain and the O's will be able to play opening day. So I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited for your team, even if you're not an O's fan. Uh, if your team starts tomorrow, hopefully you're excited as I am. Um, I'm ready to go. I'm ready for the season to start. But um, let's see who is in the chat. And we're going to say hi to a few people in the chat right now. Uh, Jeff is here. Jeff Snook's in the chat. Why can't I see that? Where, where'd it go? There he is. Jeff's here. What's up, Jeff? Good to see you, bud. Hope you're doing well. Uh, wow, we got 10, 10 likes already. Thanks, gang, for being here. And uh, again, we got lots of news. Opening day tomorrow for everybody. Again, the Orioles are they are kind of calling for bad weather in Baltimore tomorrow. I'm really hoping they don't get it. Kimberly Hazard. Hey, Kim. Welcome in. Yeah, see, the Phillies got pushed to Friday already. I don't think... Um, I don't think the Orioles have been postponed yet. Yeah, I don't see anything yet. It's still They're still on for tomorrow, right? Tomorrow's 28th. Yeah, still shows tomorrow. So, as of right now, they have not been pushed. Uh, I'm really hoping they don't. I'm really kind of... <laughs> I'm really ready to get this season started. So, I'm really hoping they do not push the game tomorrow. I'm hoping they find that window of time where they can play this game. I really do. I really, um, I really want to see tomorrow get played. But anyway, Jeff's here. Jeff Snook's here. We have also, again, Kim Hazard is here. Kim, welcome in. Good to have you. And we have Jeannie is in the chat as well. Jeannie52573. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. Good to have all of you here. Um, we're going to get right into it as we talk about the Orioles. And uh, the first thing I want to talk about, again, I want to get right off on the right foot, is um, we'll get right into it with um, the passing of Peter Angelos. Now, as you guys know, Peter Angelos had been, uh, I think, incapacitated since 2018, 2019, uh, dealing with dementia and things of that nature. Well, he passed away this week. Uh, this week or over the weekend, at the age of 94, he had been, he hadn't been running the team. Uh, John Angelos had been running the team since 2018, uh, and that wasn't a good thing. Angelos, John Angelos has just been terrible as an owner. But, um, yeah, so Ange Peter Angelos passes away at the age of 94, uh, sad. It's always sad whenever anybody passes. Um, he was, look, he was the Baltimore guy that made sure the Orioles didn't leave when Eli Jacobs had to sell the team. Remember, he bought the team, Angelos bought the team in bankruptcy court for, uh, for like $174 million, and he sold it for $1.72 billion. So it's a very big um, exchange of investment. He definitely, you know, they, the Angelos family did great. Um, say what you want about Peter Angelos. I don't, he wasn't obviously the best manager. I mean, the best owner, but he did keep the team in Baltimore. He did sign the lease agreement uh, for the, for the first few years that he was here. They were the highest salary team out there. Ninety six, ninety seven. We went to the playoffs, two thousand twelve through sixteen. They made several playoff appearances. He never won a World Series. He had his ups. He had his downs. But either way, you know, it's, it's God rest his soul uh, to Peter Angelos. Never a good thing when someone passes. But 94, geez, I hope I lived in 94. Uh, I think that would be great. Uh, he, he has a legacy as an Orioles uh, owner for sure. And, um, you know, at this point, he's, he's gone. So kind of remember that. Uh, Kirk Blake, welcome in no-hitter by Corbin Noir. <laughs> I doubt it. I don't think so. Not with Mike Trout batting. Uh, Walt. Uh, Jeff says, Walt, you'll have to help me understand the Tony Kemp signing. Yeah, we're, uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. Gloria uh, Thibodeau, welcome in. Good to have you here. Will it be cold? Yeah, it'll definitely be cold. Let's go O's, Kurt says. Yes, amen to that. And I'm from Boise. Boise, hi there. Well, welcome in, Kurt. Good to have you here. So Peter Angelos passes away, age of 94. Orioles owner for, geez, what, 30 years? Uh, never won a championship. So it's It's sad. It's always sad. Not the best owner for sure. He, he wasn't an Ed, Edward Edward Bennett Williams or, or anybody like that. But 
he, he did help the Orioles uh, to stay in, in this town, and um, he has a legacy as an Oriole owner, for what it's worth. Uh, and building off of that, um, I also want to talk about, of course, for those that don't know, today was the official sale of the Orioles. So Major League Baseball, the owners got together, and they did vote, and they approved the Orioles sale to David Rubenstein. So that is now official. It is now officially official. And David Rubenstein is now the owner of the Orioles. He is now the guy that makes the decisions moving forward. It's now David Rubenstein. And what an interesting thing about this is, when we were talking about this weeks ago, he bought 40% up front. He was going to get an additional 30% that the Angelos family owns uh, under the contingency of when Peter Angelos, is pa- Peter Angelos passes away. Well, he's now done that. So that other 30% now transfers to David Rubenstein, but that comes later. That's not something that was voted on yesterday or today. Actually, the vote happened today. So that didn't happen uh, today, but he'll get that other 30% down the road. That'll be sometime during the season when he'll be be 70% owner of the team Um, because that was all contingent upon the uh, death of Peter Angelos, which has now happened. Um, So I think it's really, really big news for the Orioles. David Rubenstein is now the guy. He'll be able to go out and do what he wants without having to, you know, look over his shoulder with this, this, that, and the other. And I think it's great news. And, and, you know, you listen to his tweet. He put something out on Twitter where he talked about, you know, uh, ushering in a new era of Orioles baseball and winning championships. And, you know, I hope. You know, all these owners say that up front. They all come in with with high hopes and, and bravado of, I'm going to be the guy that turns it around. We're here to win. We're committed to the city. We're committed to the team. We're going to win championships. Angelo said kind of the same things. I I want to trust David Rubenstein. I hope he is a man of his word, and I hope he goes out and does it. I really do. Kurt says, how is Baltimore coping with the bridge incident? God bless those who have perished. Yeah, Kurt, it was um, it was tough. I mean, I, at first I thought maybe the Orioles might cancel tomorrow, even if it was good weather, because of the key bridge, uh, you know, um, tragedy, but it doesn't seem like they're going to, it's really going to do anything, but you know, it affects, I think it's going to, economically and in Baltimore, it's definitely going to be something that affects them because that bridge, I went over that bridge probably a hundred times. That bridge was a huge thoroughfare for people to get from the east to the west of Baltimore. Um, that's gone now and that's gone for years. It's going to be at least a year for them to clean it up and then several years for them to rebuild a bridge. So we're talking years before this this incident is fully put behind us. But yeah, God bless those and, and hearts and, and, and prayers out to those that lost members of their family from that and those that lost their lives. Just a, just a terrible, terrible incident. Hey, Victor, welcome in. Good to see you. Um, you know what? Before we go any further, I did want to do a little bit of housekeeping because we do have some new people in here for those that don't know. Um, of course, every Monday we're here with Orioles Weekly. Uh, we do Orioles Weekly at 6 p.m. Every Monday as... Uh, at, When we can. We're doing Wednesday this week. I had another commitment on Monday. I couldn't make it. But usually it'll be Mondays at 6. Um, We had to do it tonight because I wanted to make sure I got it in this week. Uh, Also on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, we do Orioles videos and Major League Baseball videos at 9 a.m. It's not live streams. These are are videos. Be sure to check them out. Just posted another video today. I think it was number number 6 in my uh, top 25 Baltimore Orioles of all time. So be sure to check that out. On Wednesdays, starting once the season starts, uh, I think it's April 8th, 9th, 10th, something like that, we'll have our Game of the Week, Orioles Game of the Week, where we'll do the play-by-play, which is going to be a lot of fun. And, of course, Thursdays and Fridays. Thursdays right now, Fridays are coming in May. Thursdays and Fridays, starting in May, we do our Hall of Fame profiles. So if you have a profile uh, of of a Hall of Famer you're looking to get more information on, keep watching these. We've got tons of them out there already. I love them. I think they're so much fun because I learned so much from them. So be sure to check those out every Thursday and Friday, your Hall of Fame player profiles. And there you go. So there's almost something every day of the week, except for the weekends, where you can get some baseball content from us. Candy Mom, what's up, Cynthia? Welcome in, dear. Good to see you. I know she's heading down to Disney soon, our first member on our other channel. First thing David Rubenstein needs to do is re-sign Elias and company in the front office. Oh, I agree. 
And I think you will. I think you will. Sony 4K, welcome in. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Um, just want to do something real fast with Tony 4K. Welcome in. Chris Slemmer, welcome in, buddy. Good to see you as well. Paul Angle, my man, welcome in. Good to have you here. So again, Orioles uh, principal owner, Peter Angelos, former principal owner, Peter Angelos, passes away. And then just a few days later, the sale of the Orioles becomes official. It's approved by Major League Baseball owners. And now David Rubenstein is the man. He is on top of the world. All righty. Let's see who else is here. Everybody's saying hi to everybody. All right. Let's keep going. Let's keep talking about some Orioles baseball. I'm sorry. I'm kind of out of the loop on this stuff today. All right. So the next topic, as everybody knows, um, this week the Orioles had to make their final cuts to the season. And uh, part of those cuts was um, Jackson Holiday. They reassigned Holiday to uh, minor league camp, and um, he's now going to start the season at AAA. And I've gone back and forth with people on this. I've gone on some other YouTube channels, some other websites, and, and kind of made my my thoughts known on what I thought about this move. Um, and, and it kind of leads into our mailbag this week. Our mailbag, uh, Victor, who's in the chat, sent me a message talking about holiday. So I'm going to give my two cents on what I think of this. Um, I, first off, I trust the Orioles. I trust Elias. I trust Brandon Hyde. I trust ownership. I trust all these guys that they understand and know what they're doing. That being said, I don't agree with the move. And here's why I don't agree with the move. People keep telling me, well, look at his left-handed numbers in spring training. He went 2-for-12 against left-handers. He needs more seasoning at AAA against lefties and then come up at that point. And he needs more at-bats. So I'm going to answer both of these one at a time, and this is my rebuttal to those two. Those two pushbacks as to why. Actually, there's three. There's a third one, too. People are saying that the Orioles are trying to save his service time to get, get more years out of him. So first, I'll, I'll talk about the left-handed hitters. He went two for 12. That's a very small sample size. So very small sample size. I can't talk tonight. I, 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 I can't make a decision off of 12 at-bats against left-handers. Secondly, lefty on lefty, a lot of left-handers do not do well against left-handed hitters. And if I read the numbers right, and I kind of looked into this, Gunnar Henderson, rookie of the year last year, 28 home runs, 85 RBIs, had a great year. I think he hit 203 against left-handers. Of his 28 home runs, three were against left-handers. Now, I could be wrong on that. You guys are more than welcome to look me up. Cedric Mullins, who primarily hits left-handed now, hit like 233 last year against left-handers. So lefty on lefty, most guys struggle. They're not going to hit 300 or 285 against lefties. They just don't. Most don't. Unless you're the super, 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 superstar. And... Maybe Gunnar Henderson in time. I, I believe he will be the super, super, superstar. And I think that 203 average is going to jump about 60 to 70 points over time. And I think the same can be said for Jackson Holiday. I don't think you send him down just because he's 2 for 12 against left-handers in spring training. I think he hit well enough. The guy hit 330 or something, very close to 330 in spring training. He did everything he was asked to do. He changed his position. He did well with that as well. I didn't understand that side of it. Then secondly... People say, well, he needs more at-bats in AAA. I don't agree with that either, and here's my reason for that. There have been plenty of guys, Manny Machado being one of them, I think, who never even played a day in, the, in, in AAA. Didn't even play a day in AAA. He went straight from Bowie, AA Bowie was called to the major leagues. And I think Matt Wieters might have been too. I, I, I don't know. I could be wrong on that. But there are several guys that I know in the history of the Orioles that have passed triple a and gone straight from double a to the majors so this is not unheard of that these guys don't get these regular at bats in triple a it doesn't have to happen to be ready for the major leagues will this guy struggle he probably will Gunnar henderson struggled when he came up remember april he batted like 198 in april adley rutschman when he first came up was hitting like 210 in the in the beginning when he first came up so struggling is part of the game because these pitchers are going to adjust to these hitters, and then the hitters got to adjust back. So even if he goes down there and gets another 120 at bats in AAA, he's probably going to come up and still struggle. So did they? What did the at bats do? Maybe they helped him. Maybe they didn't. I don't know. 
And then last but not least, Chris kind of mentioned it right in the chat right there. And I agree 100%. They probably sent them down for service time. But in my opinion, this is where I thought we had the different ownership. Because this is the type of thing previous ownership would do to cheapen it. Keep them down an extra year to keep the service time so we don't have to go to arbitration so early. And we don't have to offer contracts so early. I don't agree with that. I agree 100%, Chris. Talent is talent. If he's ready to go, he's ready to go. And I don't think he did anything. He did it last year in spring training. He batted like 400 last year in spring training. And then he hit like 330 this year in spring training. And he did everything you asked him to do. I just, I don't agree with the move. I understand it. I don't agree with it. I don't think they're wrong and I'm right. I just don't agree with it. I don't think he did anything bad enough the warrant having to be sent down. And 12 at-bats against left-handers is not a legitimate reason to say he's got to go down. Just my opinion. I, but again, I, that's fine, Jeff. Two, two for 12 at nine strikeouts. Big deal. Again, look at the numbers of these other guys. They struggle against lefties. That's, that's, all, I, that's all I'll say. I, I don't disagree that he didn't do well against lefties. He didn't. He went two for twelve. That's less than a. That's less than. You know, that's like less than two hundred batting average. But that doesn't mean. I don't know. I just. I, I, if he had gone two for thirty against lefties, okay, I'm with you. But I don't know. I. Uh, I think he was coming around also, and if I'm not mistaken, the grand slam he hit, will get was against Kikuchi, who was a left-hander, and that was late in camp. So I think the later he went into camp, the more comfortable against those left-handers he was starting to get. Just my opinion. Yeah, I think he will be up soon enough. And I do have patience. It's not about that. It's not about that, Kurt. But it's more for me, it's about honoring those players that have deserved it. And to me, he deserved to run down that red carpet on his first year. He he, he earned it. That's just my opinion. And everybody's going to say, well, he'll have it next year and the year after. And that's all fine. But if he comes up in April, he, he won't be a rookie next year. So he won't get that honor as a rookie that very few guys get. I, again, just my opinion. I I just I'm not gonna I'm not gonna buy into well, he needs more seasoning. I don't see it. Talent is talent. I think the talent's there. And I think he's gonna get 150 at bats or so, 120 at bats in the minors. He's gonna come up and he's gonna struggle. And if he got zero at bats in the minors and he comes into the season, there's going to be times he's going to struggle. It just happens. Last year, Grayson Rodriguez made the opening day team, struggled. They sent him down. And why couldn't they do that with Jackson Holiday? What's the big deal? He makes the team. He comes into the regular season. If he struggles, you send him down. You do a reset and then bring him back up. At, again, that's, that's how I see it. They've done it in the past. That was just my opinion. Um, again, I just think that's what they could have done. They, they have enough talent and enough depth that if he does struggle, you can send him down, say, look, let's get a reset, take some at-bats, take the pressure off a little bit, come back up. But if he's here and he's lighting it up, wow, you get him from the get-go. The lineup just becomes that much more uh, formidable against these other teams, and it just makes you that much better. I'm sorry, I just... You know, Ramon Arias, Jorge Mateo, or Jackson Holiday. I, I, I don't know. It's just just my opinion. Uh, Victor says, I'm sorry you play with the big team. This could shatter his confidence, uh, in my opinion, playing the minors so weak compared to the bigs. No, I don't think it's going to shatter his confidence, Victor. I don't. I, I think the kid's well. Uh, he, he's very mature for his age, and he understands the game. He's been around it his whole life. His father was Matt Holiday, who's a borderline Hall of Famer himself. So he's been around since day one. As a little boy, he understands the game, and he understands that part of it. Um, so I think he's ultimately going to be fine. I really do. He'll be okay. Nomadic Brian, welcome in. Good to see you. Maybe looking at trade possibilities for Mateo. Again, Kurt, the thing about trade possibilities with Mateo is this. There's got to be value there. These other teams have to have value and find value in a player like a Jorge Mateo. So... If I'm looking at his numbers from last year, why would I want him? Why would I want a guy that's going to bat 210, can't get on base, uh, and, and, you know, he, he hit like two home runs the rest of the year after April. I think he hit like six in April. The rest of the year he hit two. 
and he hit like 210 for the year. He was terrible. Uh, his on base was horrible. There's no value there. Now, maybe he lights it up in April like he did last year, and he batted 360 in April last year. He goes out and hits 360, and his value goes up. Maybe the Orioles get a minor leaguer or cash considerations. You're not getting anything of value for a Jorge Mateo. You're just not. You're just you're just not. Teams aren't going to do that because teams would rather say no thanks. We'll wait till he till you release him and we'll get him on waivers for nothing. That's that's what'll happen. Just my opinion. Just my opinion. So anyway, Jackson Holiday's reassigned. The Orioles also did do some other uh, reassigning, obviously. Um, the other cuts, Kobe Mayo, Connor Norby went to minor league camp. Heston Kirstad and Kyle Stowers were optioned as well. Albert Suarez and David Bran- Branuelos also were reassigned. Um, uh, Colton Wong and uh, Julia, Julio, Julio uh, uh, Jorge Tehran, whatever his name is, Julio Tehran was also, uh, they were given their releases Um, because they had opted out of their contracts. They said if we didn't make the camp, I mean, if we didn't make the Major League team opening day, we would want to be free agents and try to go find work elsewhere. So the Orioles honored that and released those players. So they are down. Now the Orioles did go ahead and sign, um, and they might sign another Mateo uh, like Tony Kemp. Hard to figure that. Yeah, they went out and signed Tony Kemp to a Major League deal this week. So he didn't get a minor league deal. He got a major league deal, which means he's on the 40 man, which means he'll probably make the opening day roster. Again, they did this last year and I shook my head or scratched my head when they did it with Danny Coulomb. Remember he was like a late season, end of camp, spring training signing. And we're like, who the heck is this guy? Why are they signing him? And he was an integral part of, of the bullpen all year. Tony Kemp, he has ties with Mike Elias. He has ties with Cole Irvin, I think, too. So we'll see. I don't know what this guy's going to do. I think he's a placeholder for Jackson Holiday. Um, he can play different positions. He gives you that. I don't know what they're going to do with him, Jeff. I, I, I didn't understand the move. But, hey, it is what it is. And that's just kind of that's kind of where we are. What can I say? But anyway, tomorrow, opening day, Corbin Burns, Corbin Burns has taken the, uh, taken the mound. The Orioles haven't actually released their lineup yet, which is too bad. I would have loved to have seen the lineup for tomorrow to see what, what, uh, who's going to be um, hitting. I'll probably say you know, Cedric will bat first, although it's a lefty on the mound in Sandoval. He's a lefty, so it might not be. It might be, jeez, who do you bat first? You put Adley first? So Adley, Adley Rutschman first, maybe Austin Hayes second, Santander third, Gunner four, uh, you know, Urias five, I don't know, or my no, Mountcastle five, Urias six, maybe Cedric seven. Yeah, I don't I don't know how the lineup's gonna go tomorrow. Mateo's gonna be nine. So, and you know, whoever's gonna DH, I guess. We'll see. I'll see what the lineup's like. What do you guys think? How do you see the lineup for tomorrow? I just hope they play. <laughs> I really do. I don't know why. I have this uncanny feeling that the game's going to get canceled. I really hope it doesn't. But right now, we're looking at... I was looking at this earlier. For tomorrow, yeah, I mean, tomorrow, they're looking at an 80% chance of rain. And it's going to rain... Uh, actually, you know what? They're from 12 p.m., to 6 p.m. tomorrow, they're not really calling for major rain. They're calling for, like, I don't know. The Orioles might be able to get this game in tomorrow. I don't know, gang. They might be able to get this game in tomorrow. We'll see. Anyway. All right. So now let's get into the fun parts. Now that we've gone over everything when it comes to the Orioles, I'm going to give you guys my division winners, my American League Championship Series teams, and then my World Series teams and my World Series winners. These are my picks. Uh, I didn't put a lot of <laughs> didn't put a lot of thought into this, but I'm gonna do it. How much playing time do you think Kowser will actually get? I think I trust the Orioles to understand that he needs to get a lot of playing time. I'll just say that uh, he's got to get 400 at bats this year. He does. He has to get 400 at bats. I think there's enough flexibility that he can play left, 
You can put Austin at DH, or maybe Austin Hayes gets a day off, or he goes into center, and you put Cedric Mullins in for a day off, or DH. He should play and get 400 at-bats at least this year. Jeff, he's got to play all the time. He's got to play. I'm sorry. I, I, I He's, he's got to play all the time. Put him in left, put him in right field, put Santan there, put Santan there at first, or put him at DH. Ryan Mountcastle can DH or something like that. But he's got to play often. And um, if, if you play six days out of the week, he's got to be in the lineup three or four. And they'll, they'll figure it out. They'll do the rotation. They have to. They have to. All right, let's get right into my, again, my, let me pull it up here because I, I, I made all this up. I got to bring it up. My 2024 Major League Baseball predictions. I'm going to go by divisions first. I'm just going to give you my order of divisions, not wins, losses, stuff like that. Just my just my wins, I mean, just my teams, last place all the way up to first. And then I'll give you my uh, playoff teams, uh, my wild card teams, and then who's going to face each other in the ALCS, the NLCS, and then who faces each other in the World Series, and the winner. Here we go. We're going to start in the National League, Okay. National League West. So in the National League West, I have Colorado in last place. They're coming in fifth, followed by San Francisco. Although I feel San Francisco is much better. I think this is the second toughest division in baseball. I really do behind the Orioles division in the East. But I'm going to go with Colorado in fifth. I have San Francisco in fourth. I actually have Arizona in third. I think San Diego is going to have a bounce back, and they're going to finish in second. And I think the Dodgers are going to win the West. I just do. I can't see... I can't see the Dodgers. They're just too stacked. Now, don't get me wrong. For what it's worth, this whole Shohei Otani stuff could implode on this team. And that could be a big downfall to them and be a major distraction in this season. But I think the talent wins out on this team. There's just way too much there. I mean, you've got Freddie Freeman, Mookie Betts, and Shohei Otani all on the same team. With Tyler Glasnow. Uh, in, in in their starting rotation. Now, their rotation could be a weak spot for them, but I just think this team's going to hit anyway. Um, you got three guys that could vie for the National League MVP on that team. I just I think they're really, really good, and that's why I think the Dodgers are going to win the West. In the Central, I have, I hate to say it, Pittsburgh fans, but I have the, I have Pittsburgh, I have the Pirates in last. I have them in fifth. Uh, I have St. Louis in fourth, although I could St. Louis, I could see St. Louis as high as first. But I'm going to go with fourth. I'm going to go with Milwaukee in third. I think the loss to Corbin Burns is going to be a huge loss to them. I think the Cubs are in second. And I actually, this is my one of my surprises. I think Cincinnati's an upstart. And I can see Cincinnati pulling in Orioles of two years ago. Not in Orioles where they win 100 games. But I can see where they pull in Orioles and win 83 to 87, 88 games. And I think that could be enough to win the Central. So that's my Central winner is Cincinnati. Uh, in the East, uh, I have the Nationals bringing up the East uh, in fifth, followed by the Marlins. I, I think the Marlins are going to take a step back. I actually think the Mets are better than people are giving them credit for. So I have the Mets in third. I have Philadelphia in second, and I have Atlanta in first. Uh, Atlanta, again, another team that, that one to nine is just really a juggernaut, a really good team. And I just I can't see them faltering this year. Although I think the Phillies are going to give them a run. I think that division is going to be won by Atlanta by about two, maybe three games at most. It's going to come down to the last few weeks of the regular season. But that's my pick. I got Atlanta. I got Cincinnati. And I got LA winning the divisions. But joining them in the playoffs, I have Philadelphia, San Diego, and the Cubs. So I'll leave it at that for now. I'll get to my ALCS, and, and I'll get to my NLCS in a little bit. Yeah, Atlanta's really good, uh, Brian. They really are. Now, in the American League, let's start in the West. Okay, we'll start out West. Out West, obviously, I think everybody agrees. Oakland's going to be in last place. Uh, although, I, again, I think they're better than people give them credit for. I have Anaheim next in fourth place. But Anaheim and Oakland could swap, and I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, I actually think Texas is going to take a step back. Um, I have them in third place, and here's why. First off, I think the two teams ahead of them are better. And secondly, this is a team that 
came down to the last day of the regular season to make the playoffs. They almost didn't even make the playoffs last year, let alone go on and win the World Series. But once they got in, they went on a run, they got hot, and they won. And that just goes to show you anybody can win. But this team almost didn't even make the playoffs last year. They won it on the last day of the regular season to get in. So I don't think they're as good as we make them out to be. I don't think they're terrible, but I think they're going to miss the playoffs. And I think they're, well, I think they're in third place here. I'm not saying they're going to miss the playoffs just yet. So I have Houston in second, and I think Seattle's going to surprise. I think Seattle's got an excellent, excellent starting rotation. And I think they have Julio Rodriguez, and he could he could vie for the MVP this year. And they're a really good team. And I think Seattle's going to I think Seattle's going to win the West. Now in the Central, uh, I have the White Sox. I don't think anybody's surprised there. I think the White Sox are going to finish in fifth, followed by Kansas City in fourth. Again, just like out West, those two could swap, and I wouldn't be surprised. Um, Chicago could finish ahead of Kansas City, but I think Kansas City's good enough now with Bobby Witt Jr. and some other players. They're going to be all right. I have Detroit in third. I have Minnesota in second. And I'm actually picking Cleveland to win the division in the Central. I know that's a surprise to a lot of folks. I know Minnesota won it last year. But I think Cleveland's going to be just good enough to win this division. I don't think this division is a very strong division at all. Uh, One to five. I don't. But I think Cleveland's going to pull out the Central. And then in the East, why didn't the O's... uh, Signed Jordan Montgomery. Oh, I don't, I don't know, Kurt, but he only got a one-year contract with an option for a second with the Diamondbacks. I'm not a fan of Jordan Montgomery. If you go back and watch some of my other videos, I'm not a big fan of him. I don't think, I think the guy's average at best, and I just think he had a really good postseason. But one postseason doesn't make a pitcher long term, and I think everybody agrees with me because it took to the end of spring training for this guy to sign. He didn't get what he wanted. He got a one-year, $20 million, $25 million contract with possibly a club app option for another year at 20 if he makes 10 starts or something like that. So I think everybody else agrees with me because nobody was clamoring to get this guy. And I think there's reasons for that. I think he's overrated. I really do. I just think he had a really good postseason. You guys remember when Mark Lemke used to play for the Braves and had that great World Series where he hit like 400? Do you think anybody's going to sign him to a $50 million deal because he had one good World Series? Eh, I don't know. Just my opinion. As a Mets fan, I'm sick of the Braves. Well, Victor, you know what? I don't know what to tell you. I mean, look, I'm the, I'm an Orioles fan, and I was sick of the Yankees and the Red Sox for years and 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 years. And years. I think you get my point. So I get it. But how do you... You got to... We look. We learned the hard way with 15 straight years. I haven't won a I haven't won a World Series in over over 40 years, so I get it. But you've got to make the right moves, and the Orioles finally did it, and now they have a legitimate shot. Jeff says Detroit is the team to watch in the Central. They have enough to take out my Twins. Cleveland finishes second. Okay, maybe. I mean, Jeff, I don't disagree with that. I I I could see. Look, I had Cleveland first, Minnesota second, Detroit third. I don't think Detroit's there just yet. I got to get a drink of water, guys. I think they could do it next year. But but we'll see. Um, I saw them in spring training uh, against the Orioles. I wasn't impressed. They have a couple. Like, yeah, Spencer Torkelson. He's really good. And they got some other players that are coming. I just don't think they're there yet. All right. So now to my East. In the East. Uh, again, this is really fun. Um but I think this one's kind of weird. But I have Boston in last place. I'm sorry. I just don't see it. You know, the one big si- the one big signing they had, you know, Lucas Giolito, he's out for the year. They only signed him in a two-year contract. And one of those two years, he's going to be out. And he's probably going to miss part of the second year. So, you know, other than that, they didn't do any other really big moves. And I think their team is pretty weak. You know, they traded away Chris Sale. I, I just I have Boston in the last place. I'm, I'm I just I don't see it with them. Maybe I'm wrong, but I just I'm not I'm not seeing it. Uh, in fourth place, I gotta go with Tampa Bay. I think Tampa is one of these teams that everybody's always like, how do they do it every year? They find a way every single year, and I agree, they find a way every single year. But I don't think it'll be this year. I don't. I think this will be the year it finally catches up to them. Uh, I think the East is stacked enough 
that they're going to really struggle in some games. And I got them in fourth place. I still think they'll be over 500, but I have them in fourth place. Uh, in third place, I have Toronto. Uh, Toronto is this team that has so much potential. Um, and if that potential lives up to the potential that we think, they could win the division. But I don't see it. Uh, I just, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if Vladimir Guerrero and Bo Bichette are ever going to take that next step to be in that major superstar player for this team. And uh, other than that, they've got question marks in other places. And uh, I have Toronto in third. I have New York. I almost put, if, if New York was fully healthy, if they had Garrett Cole, I might have actually put them ahead of the Orioles because the Juan Soto trade was so huge. And you put Soto in that lineup with, with Aaron Judge and some of these other guys and a possible Anthony Rizzo healthy Anthony Rizzo. Excellent lineup. They're going to mash the ball. But losing Garrett Cole, the best pitcher in baseball, man, they're going to struggle. Now, if they can hang on for those few months that he's out and they can stay close, you know, maybe they make a run. But they're going to have to hit because they've got question marks. After Garrett Cole, Nestor Cortez, Carlos Rodon, uh, I can't think of the other guy's name that, that they just signed. They're, they're oh, Marcus Stroman. Question marks up and down the rotation from that. I just, I don't see it. And, of course, obviously I have the Orioles coming back. Everybody's back. They're stronger. They went out and got the ace they had to go out and get. They have a bona fide closer, even though they lost Bo Bautista, who's the best closer in baseball. I still think Craig Kimberl is going to be fine. He's going to do well. He's going to save 30 games for the Orioles. And that's that's why the Orioles are going to win. They're going to win the East. I just, that's where I got them. I got them winning the East. I don't see it happening. I don't see anybody else taking them out. And I think the O's are going to win the East. That's my, that's my pick. Now, as for what teams are joining them in the, in the playoffs. So again, we got Baltimore, Cleveland, and Seattle winning the divisions. I think the Yankees are going to make the playoffs. I think Toronto's going to make the playoffs. And I think Houston's going to make the playoffs. So that's your six in the American League. So the six in the American League, Baltimore, Cleveland, Seattle, New York, Toronto, and Houston. The six in the National League are Los Angeles, Cincinnati, Atlanta, Philadelphia, San Diego, Chicago. Now in the National League, I have the Atlanta Braves playing the Philadelphia Phillies for a trip to the World Series. And I think Atlanta's going to win. I, I really like Atlanta's team. I think they have a great team. All 26 players, bullpen, starting rotation, lineup, good manager. I'm going with I'm going with Atlanta in six games over Philadelphia to make it to the World Series. And in the American League, I'm going to be a homer. I have the Orioles playing Seattle, and I have the Orioles winning the series in seven. I think the Orioles are going to play. You're going to get a star-studded young group of players that are going to be on the big stage, Julio Rodriguez, Gunnar Henderson, Adley Rutschman, J Jackson Holiday. All these players are going to be on the big stage playing against each other on national television, vying for the World Series. And I think the Orioles just edge them out with just a little bit more talent and make their first World Series, oh, excuse me, since 1983. And then in the World Series, I got to do it. I just I said this. I said it two years ago, folks. Go back and watch it. I said 2024 was going to be a good year for the Orioles. But I said 2025 was their year. I said it. I, and I'm, I'm sticking to it. I have the Orioles over Atlanta in seven. And we get our first World Series championship since 1983. I said it in 2022 when they won 83 games. And I said they're going to be really good. And somebody said, oh, they're going to go next year and win. I said, no, I think 2025 is going to be the year. And I'm sticking to it. And 2025 is my pick. This is my year. Not 2025, 2024. I said it. I said 2024 will be the season. I keep saying 25. I think it was 24. That's the one. I think they're going to do it. I think this is going to be the year. Now I'm confusing myself. I don't remember what I said. <laughs> Brian says the Yankees could go either way. They are a concern. Orioles on top of the East. Orioles over Houston in the AL Championship at sevens of games. I don't think Houston's going to make it to the NFC to the American League Championship again. They've been like six straight years. It's got to end at some point, right? Maybe. I don't know. I just, I don't know. 
Anyway, Orioles, Braves, World Series. Man, that's going to be a great one, too. And uh, I think the Orioles win it. All right, last thing before we get out of here. I got to give you my award winners. So the Orioles are going to take home some hardware this year. Absolutely going to take home some hardware. And let's discuss what Orioles are going to take home some hardware this year. Again, just my opinion, just my thoughts on who I think is going to take home some pick town sports. Welcome in. How's it going? First time chatting in live. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I saw your channel the other day. Uh, I really like what you what you do. And um, I, did, I think I subscribe. If I didn't, I will go out there and subscribe. But good to have you in. Thanks for being here. Um, so I'm, I'm giving my Orioles award winners for this year. Um, what I think the Orioles hardware is going to be. And here we go. So for me... And again, some of these are, I'm going out on a limb here. Some of these are some bold predictions, but humor me and, and just kind of stick with me. And I want to hear from you guys. Let me know what you think. Do, you know, Where do you see the Orioles uh, players? What kind of awards do you think they're going to get? So we'll start with gold gloves. I think this year, now that Gunnar Henderson is playing shortstop predominantly all season, that's going to be his position. He doesn't have to switch back and forth from third and short. I think he's going to win a gold glove. I thought he should have won it last year, but he didn't have enough... Uh, time at either position, enough games to really qualify. But this year, I think he gets it. Uh, his, his run saved, uh, whatever those new metrics are, was really off the charts. And uh, I think Gunner's going to get one. I think Adley Rutschman's going to get a, uh, a gold glove behind the plate. And I think Austin Hayes is too. Austin Hayes, as much as I don't think he's a... a I'm not the biggest fan of Austin Hayes. I think he's an okay player. He reminds me a lot of Nick Markakis, this guy that is a good player, dependable. And even that, he's not even really that dependable. He's hurt all the time. But I think he's really good defensively. I'll give Hayes that. I think defensively, and plus he's got a great arm, he's really good. Uh, I think Austin Hayes is going to get a gold glove this year. Not sure how, how he didn't qualify for utility glove last year. I I agree. I, I, I picked down sports. I agree. I thought he should have won last year, but I do think he's going to take home some some gold this year, and I think he's going to get a gold glove. So Gunner Adley, Austin Hayes, gold gloves. I don't see. I don't think Cedric's going to get one in center field. Just too many other people with competition. Silver sluggers. I got two guys taking home a silver slugger this year. I think Gunner's going to take one again. I think Adley Rutschman's going to take it. Gunner is just. I think this is. He's going to really be a superstar this year. I really see it. I had said last year too that I thought he was going to be the next Oriole to hit 40 home runs in the season. I still think it's going to happen. It might not happen this year. But he's going to hit 40 in a season. I know he is. He's going to do it. I mean, he hit 28 as a rookie, and that's with April being a terrible, terrible month for him. Imagine if he had had a good April. Even just a, a decent April. If he had hit like 250 in April, he could have went from 28 home runs to like 33, 34. Um, I think he's going to do it. So silver sluggers for Gunner, silver slugger for Adley Rutschman. Um, Picktown Sports says, I have a bold prediction this year. Westberg wins a silver slugger. You know what? That's a good one. If he gets enough at bats at third base, I think he could do it. I really, really do. I think that's a good one. I didn't want to go there just yet because I want to see a full season out of Jordan Westberg before I want to give that. Maybe next year, but uh, we'll see. You think second base? Okay, maybe. I think he's going to play predominantly third um, because Gunner's going to be at short. I guess Urias could play third and maybe they'll put Jordan at second. We'll see. We'll see for sure. Um, Cy Young, I do think Corbin Burns is going to have a legitimate chance of getting a Cy Young. I think the Garrett Cole injury helps his chances, helps Burns' chances. Um, I think he's on a team that's going to win a lot of games. He's going to keep them in games. They're going to hit. This team is going to hit and hit and hit. And he's going to, I think he's going to, I think Corbin Burns, and he's in a contract year. He's going to go out on a limb, and he's really going to go. And I think he's going to win. I think he's going to win twenty games. I really do. And I think he's going to win the Cy Young. Now the next two, I'm going out on a major limb here. These are my bold predictions. Uh, I still think, although I'm not happy about the Jackson Holiday demotion, and I talked about it ad nauseum earlier. Long term, I think Holiday is an All Star center fielder, uh, like Adam Jones. Uh, Holiday. I don't think Holiday is going to play center field. I see um, Jackson Holiday at second base. I don't know. I don't know that he's going to be in center field. But um, but okay. So even though Jackson Holiday was sent down, I have this feeling that he's going to get called up pretty quickly. I think he's going to hit early, 
and I think they're going to call him up. I could be wrong. So I'm going to pick Jackson Holiday to go home with Rookie of the Year. I think the Orioles, for the first time in their history, get back-to-back Rookie of the Years. And that's what's going to happen there. I think Jackson Holiday takes home the hardware. Um, and then last but not least, and this is the one where I'm really going out on a limb here. But I really think Gunnar Henderson is going to have a legitimate chance at the American League Most Valuable Player Award. I know a lot of people are saying Juan Soto. But I think Gunnar's got a lot of protection around him in the lineup. He is learning to hit lefties better and better every day. He's now got his position as just shortstop, so he doesn't have to worry about learning third and short and going back and forth. He can concentrate on just short, which is his favorite position, so he's happy about that. Uh, He's getting bigger and stronger every day. He's learning to cover the outside of the plate. There was a couple of bats he had against lefties this spring that he just he just flared the ball in the center field for a hit. He didn't try to hit it out of the ballpark every time. I think he's really primed for a big, big season. One of his best friends is Colton Kowser, who made the team, and he's stoked about that as well. And I think we could have big things out of Gunnar Henderson this year, and I think he's got a legitimate chance, and I'm going to say it. I think he's going to win the American League MVP. And if he doesn't, he's going to be in the top three. Yeah, they'll play him at second, but his gameplay has center field written all over him. Could be a good Mullins replacement. I don't know. I don't I don't know, pick down sports. I get what you're saying. I just don't he's never really played there. They haven't mentioned anything about it. I personally think that their job their 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 plan is to put him at second base and go around the infield with Mountcastle or Kobe Mayo at first, Gunnar Henderson at short, Jackson Holiday at second, and Jordan Westberg. Or maybe Kobe Mayo's at third, and I don't know. I just think I think for me, Jackson Holiday is going to be the second baseman. Now he could be the next Robin Yount. You're right, Robin Yount did it. Robin Yount played shortstop for many years with the Milwaukee Brewers, and then he went to then he went to the outfield. So it's possible. We'll see. Gunner is an animal. I'm so excited to see him this year. Me too. I think he's going to have a really good year. I uh, would love Jackson up early to win Rookie of the Year. Agree, Gunner looks good as an MVP candidate. We'll have a huge year. I think so. I th- I think so. Again, I I think he's gonna. I think he's got a legitimate chance of winning the award. Um, if he doesn't win it, I think he'll be in the top three. Definitely in the top five. And I think Adley's going to be right, right there too. I really do. I th- we keep forgetting about the guy that really turned this all around for the Orioles, Adley Rutschman. I think he's going to be right there too in the conversation. So I think the Orioles are primed for a really big year. You know, something that we Orioles fans have not had since 1983. I mean, you can say what you want about 96 and 97. Really good teams. Have some Hall of Famers on that team. And what we did in 2012, 14, and 15 or something. I think it was 15. It might have been 16. Where we made those playoffs with the Adam Joneses and the Nick Markakis and all. But I never really felt like those teams were really good enough to win. Win, win. Win it all. This team feels like it's good enough to win it all. And I think a lot of the prognosticators are are agreeing that they feel it's going to be a big year for the Orioles. I guess we'll see. My cousin is Jackson Merrill. Padres moved him to outfield this spring, and he won the center field job as a rookie. I see the same type of move, but 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 doubt we see it. Maybe. I mean, we'll see. You never know. You never know. I don't think... You know, it's funny. We talk about the Orioles outfield. I'll end on this. I think all three of these outfielders that are uh, right now with the Orioles, Hayes, Mullins, and Santander, I think none of them are long for this team. Yeah, I think a lot of it's going to come down to the bullpen as well. Uh, Bullpens are very volatile. One year they're good, and next year they're terrible. So we'll see. Well, there you go, folks. That's our episode of the Orioles Weekly. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Lots of big news. Orioles finally sold. It's official. Rest in peace, Peter Angelos. God bless you. Um, hearts and, and prayers out to his family. Say what you want. It's still, you know, he, his, his life is over, and, and that's sad. So rest in peace to Peter Angelos. Congratulations to David Rubenstein. Um, opening days tomorrow, gang. <laughs> Pray the weather holds up and they get this game in tomorrow. That would be fantastic. Cause I'm, I'm stoked. I'm ready to go. I'm ready for it. I'm excited. I hope you guys are too. But again, I hope you all have a great rest of your night. 
Be sure to check us out on Tuesdays for our Orioles and Major League Baseball videos, Thursdays for our Hall of Fame profiles. Um, game by game, uh, game, game play by play is coming in Wednesdays uh, really soon, starting in April. Hope you guys enjoyed this time tonight. I enjoyed it. I hope you guys have a great day. And until next time, keep rooting for the birds and your team, and take care of yourselves and each other. Opening day tomorrow. Woohoo! We'll see you then. Bye, everybody.